Hello everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Colt King Cobra. The gun that got me so fired up and made me revive my YouTube channel after three years of inactivity. So how did this thing get me so fired up? Definitely was not in a good way. So when I first bought this gun towards the end of 2019, first of all, I loved that it was a little larger than the size of a J-frame and held six rounds, and it was chambered in 357 Magnum. These are all pluses. I held it in my hand at the gun store. I quickly Googled reviews on my phone. Couldn't find anything bad, couldn't find any problems with it, so I bought it. And that's why I'm making this video, so that I can put some information out there. So if you're Googling in a gun store right now, hopefully my little video will pop up and tell you some of the problems that I had. So first of all, the seam where the side plate is on the frame where the screw is, when I bought it, it was misaligned. Like the machining was really sloppy and it didn't line up the way that it should. I really wish I would have noticed it in the gun store because I probably wouldn't have gotten it, but I didn't notice it and I got it. Anyways, I got it home and playing around with it a bit, I realized that the ejector, the plunger, when you depress the plunger, it would actually stick and you would have to push it back in. And I fixed that by depressing the plunger and spinning the cylinder while applying pressure in every different direction for about two hours while watching TV one night. That solved the problem. Now it opens and closes as it should, but the problem is the little serrations on the plunger get caught in the little sleeve in the arm that the cylinder is attached to. So basically by rotating it, you smooth out those serrations and it no longer gets stuck. It is just legitimately an awful design. Secondly, I put about 100 rounds of 38 Special and 50 rounds of 357 Magnum through the gun. I then cleaned it up and loaded up and stashed it away in case I ever needed it. And it sat around for a couple of months and I decided to take it back out to the range and enjoy shooting it again. And I unloaded it and I was gonna get a little bit of dry fire practice in before shooting for the day. And I put it out there and I cocked the hammer and the hammer just fell forward. It, it didn't catch like this like it's supposed to. And I was like, that's weird. So I tried to pull the trigger and the double action, it wouldn't do anything. It was just, it was locked, it was stuck. So I popped open the cylinder and closed it, pulled the trigger double action and the trigger stayed to the rear, it didn't reset. And <laughs> by, that, by that point I realized that I was having a problem. Now this happened a couple of days before Christmas Eve. So I call Colt and I get their answering machine and they said, we are closed for the holidays until January 2nd. And that was two weeks out. So, you know, it's great that they gave their people the time off. Uh, it really sucked for me. So in the meantime, I posted about it on Instagram. And I started to hear from a lot of people reaching out to me via direct message and commenting, saying they had similar problems with their King Cobra or their Standard Cobra. And it seemed like people were guessing it was a trigger return spring or the sear in the hammer getting sheared off uh, because of improper heat treat and the miming process or what have you. I didn't really know what it was. I, I was guessing trigger return spring. Well anyways, come January 1st, the day before Colt was going to open again, they start posting about their 2020 Colt Python all over social media. So their marketing department was open, but their customer service department was not open for people like me that had been waiting around for two weeks uh, and having a broken gun. They were ready to get more money before taking care of the person who already spent money with them. That irritated me, so I took advantage of their Python 2020 hashtags and got incredible engagement on the post, heard from even more people that had problems with the Cobra and King Cobra. And a lot of people that didn't have problems, although typically those people didn't have very many rounds through their guns, a lot of the people that had problems with them were like me and had you know, 150 rounds through the gun. Colt started reaching out to me and uh, said, we open tomorrow, give us a call, and then DM us with your information and we'll reach out to you. Well, I DM'd them with my info. They never reached out to me. They were, it, it seemed like they were saying that to save face in the public eye and didn't actually follow through. So then I called Colt, I told them what had happened, told them about the misaligned uh, side plate with the frame and told them how my gun was locking up. And this was interesting. The guy mentioned that they knew they had a problem with the King Cobras um, with the, a couple of the first batches that went out with the trigger return spring. They said they had a new design and a new part for the trigger return spring that would fix the problem. But they're not recalling the ones that are out there. So there are a bunch of people out there with Cobras and King Cobras that fired you know, a box of ammo at the range and loaded it up and they have a ticking time bomb. 
that's going to have a trigger return spring that's probably going to snap or slip off. You mentioned it was the ear of the spring that slips out or something like that. Anyways, interesting side note, I brought up that their slogan was built one at a time, proven every round. I mean, that's a hell of a claim and a hell of a slogan. I asked him if these Colt King Cobras were built one at a time and he said, well, with the way demand works and, and with you know, the resources that we have, we, we have to, you know, put these things out so fast that, you know, we have to assemble them. And he was alluding to the fact that they're mass produced. And then I was like, that's not really built one at a time, is it? And mine certainly wasn't proven every round. And then of course I got the, well, can I get your address so I can get your RMA, sir? So he didn't want to hear it. I'm sure he had heard it before because when I got this gun back, I went to their website to get a screenshot for this video and they had changed their slogan to still making history. So clearly I wasn't the only person that called them out on their BS slogan. As I was wrapping up on the phone with Colt, the rep told me that he would get an RMA out to me right away so that they could get it fixed as soon as possible. Then three days passed and I heard nothing about an RMA. So I called Colt again and uh, it was, they were gonna close in about 15 minutes, so it was close, but it was the earliest I could call on a work day. And they had already closed for the day, which sucked because it was Friday, then I had to wait Saturday, Sunday. Five days total passed, I called them on Monday, and they were like, yeah, there was a problem with our system and we couldn't send all the RMAs out to people, we don't know who got one and who didn't get one. What's your name again? So I had to give my information all over again, and then the next day I got an RMA and I was able to send it out. So total time from when it was broken to when I got it back was seven weeks. It was at Colt for five weeks. Now when I got it back, normally when you get guns back from manufacturers, they'll list parts they installed, things that were wrong with it, their observations, what they did to fix it in the gunsmith notes. This had nothing. I have no idea what was wrong with it. And I probably never will. I'm assuming it's probably the trigger return spring, but it could have been the hammers here because I had three or four people reach out to me that had the hammer problem. Now here is the real kicker. When I got this back, I took it out. And the first thing I looked at was, did they fix the side plate alignment? And the answer is no. Not only did they not fix it, it's worse than it was before. Now it doesn't align back towards the hammer. So they cracked it open and fixed the internals and then put it back together and what, looked at it and was like, yeah, he's right, that does look messed up. And then just shipped it back out to me because it was either too expensive for them to fix to be worthwhile or hoping that I wouldn't notice. Uh, either way, man, that is really irritating. And not to mention this gun street price, you're going to be out the door with it for over $900. This gun is almost a grand. I would forgive the shortcomings and having to send it back into the factory or the mismatched side plate if it was a Taurus or a Charter Arms. Because when you spend three to $400 on a revolver, that's the territory that you're going to be in. Or a Rock Island Armory, for example. You, you kind of expect that with the territory of a budget revolver. This gun is almost a grand. You expect better for that. That is the level of Smith & Wesson Performance Center. That is the level of the Kimber K6 and K6S that are really phenomenal revolvers. And this thing is just embarrassing. I would be embarrassed if I put this out. And of course, as we all know, the Python 2020 ended up having some major problems right when it came out with the hammer striking the same chamber on the cylinder over and over again seemingly randomly and then going back to working again check out Hickok 45's video on that and then people receiving these $1,500 Colt 2020 pythons with marred up crowns on the muzzles of the gun I mean it's it is everybody who's in the know knows that Colt is writing on their name they are mass producing and kicking out these guns jacking up the prices because they're Colts and this is coming from someone who loves Colt products this is my Colt Anaconda in 44 Magnum, and I would not part with this gun for the world. This is one of my favorite guns. And I mean, man, the lockup is tight. It feels so good in the hand. I mean, the seams on the side plate are truly seamless, and the thing is built like a tank. They just don't make them like they used to. So if you're considering purchasing a Colt Cobra, Colt King Cobra, Colt King Cobra Target, Colt Python, that are new production, I would strongly encourage you to not do so. And I know there are some people out there that have had good experiences, but there are also people out there like me that have had really bad experiences. So spend your money on a quality firearm that's not gonna let you down and on a manufacturer that really backs up their product. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.